Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. My name is Karen Stevens and I am your host for today. Joining me is our regular panel, Miss Iris Acker, actress, producer, uh, Mr. William Hirschman, theater qu critic and journalist, and next to me is the ever-present Michael McKeever, actor and playwright. Today our topic is the secrets of a successful casting director and joining us is a very special guest. Miss Lori Wyman. Thank you, Karen. Who is a premier casting director in South Florida. So, to start off, Lori, tell us about your agency and a little bit about how you came to be a casting director here in South Florida. Well, I'm a casting director, so just, just to clarify, there's mm -hmm. a difference between being a casting director and a talent agent. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not actually an agency. I'm a casting director company. Mm -hmm. So, we don't represent actors. Mm -hmm. We actually work for the production company, mm -hmm. and they give us a script. We break it down, we read it, and then we call the ca the casting or the talent agents, and we ask them to submit the actors. Mm -hmm. Okay, how did you get started? Oh wow! Well, I graduated from college in Miami, and right out of college, one of the talent agencies actually had put a uh, call out to one of their professors because one of the agents had also graduated from the University of Miami, and she contacted her her former professor, and she said, I'm looking for somebody to do filing and typing. So that woman made an announcement in her class, anybody interested in doing filing and typing at a talent agency? And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> because I know that that's how you start, any, you have to start at the bottom. You know, and I had, I'm not, a, I'm not a typist, I don't file, but I wanted to get in the door. So that's how I, in a nutshell, that's how I started. And I started working for the talent agency for about five years. And then from there, learning so much there, I said, I really, really want more of a hand in casting and actually <laughs> meeting the talent and auditioning the talent. And I wanted to be that person. Um, the agent, they submit people to the casting director. And as a casting director now, I know I don't always accept all of the submissions because some of them aren't exactly right, in, in my opinion, and that's really what it is. It's our opinions. I don't think it's there, you're right, or I don't think this is the right role for you, or maybe I get 50 submissions and I can only accommodate 10. So I have to narrow it down. So I wanted to be that person that actually made this selection. So I started to work for one of the casting director companies, and we were handling the Miami Vice account. And this is the 30-year anniversary of Miami Vice. So I started working directly for Miami Vice, and then went from there to the next one to the next one and so on. Okay, Laura, let's get back to the topic. The secrets of a successful casting director. You have competition. I do. I know that uh, jobs are bid out. I mean, you have to bid on it, but you've been successful altogether. Let's get stick to the topic. Okay. What's your secrets? I'm a very positive person, and I believe. And I just always believed that I was going to be. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. I mean, I work hard. I don't just believe and say, okay, now you're on your own. I mean, I work hard. I do the footwork. I, I do everything that I'm supposed to do. Um, I also give 100 plus percent. I don't take shortcuts when I do casting jobs. If they ask me for five, I give them six. If they ask me for this much, I give them this much because I want to do my job over and above. And I remember years ago, I used to put together, this is before the internet and before you'd send links and before you could just email everybody's headshots and resumes. Right. And, but before it used to be, you'd collect the headshot and resume. And so, we, so I would do a notebook. I would hole punch the, the, the pictures and I'd put them in a three ring binder and I, I'd put the cover page on and here's the men and here's the women. And, I remember another casting director said to me, you do all that work? I would never do all that. And I clocked that and I said, that's why that client keeps coming. Because that person, she just wants to throw a rubber band around her pictures so that when the client receives them, the rubber band snaps and everything falls all over the floor. But 
ah, and the, the clients would be so impressed with something as simple as that. But it really made a difference, and I've always gone over and above when a client asks for something. Like this past weekend, I was on the phone with clients all weekend and emailing all week. I didn't want to do that, but I knew that every time they sent an email, if I responded right away, that was going to give me brownie points. They were going to go back and say, wow, she was very easy to work with. So in addition to being a good casting director, I also apply all of that to, to the business practices. In any business, you can do that, but that's how I operate. And a lot of casting directors or a lot of people in our business don't necessarily do that. But what is it that, when, what is it that a successful casting director does when they are looking, they've got an assignment to fill two or three jobs and they've got all these headshots and resumes. What is it that you think you've learned that you bring to the job that makes the difference in, in matching them up? I feel, and, and it's been proven, I guess, yeah. <laughs> I feel that I have a really, really good eye for talent. Now, you An might- instinct. I do. I have a really good instinct. Mm -hmm. um, I can meet an actor they can, all they do is say their name, and I can say they're good or they're not good. In what sense? Because there's a, there's a, there's a confidence about them. There's an articulation about them. There is the way they deliver the dialogue. Like, theater actors are very, hi, my name is, and I go, yeah, that's not going to work for TV and film. Because I primarily do television and film right. casting. Uh, most of the television shows that come to Florida and a lot of the films that come to Florida, I've been very blessed to have <laughs> cast, and there's different kinds of acting. Mm -hmm. Right. And I've worked with some really great theater actors who come in and are, are, are shouting to the back of the room. <laughs> and I say, no, no, you're playing to a camera. You're playing to a lens that's this big, you know, that, that big, it's tiny. And when you do theater, these actors are trained, and I, I have a trained theater background, even though I, I don't do it. But I know, I was taught, you play to the last person in the last row who's right. deaf and blind. That's what I was taught, you know? So, so I know how to project. And so when actors come in and they're shouting at me, I go, no, 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 no. But, no, no, but no. I'm curious when, in the sense that if, if someone is judged <clears throat> in the first few seconds or even the first minute or two of an audition, that doesn't give them a chance to show you the range that they're capable. How do you tell when somebody comes up and says hello to you, and is personable, but in fact is able to do three or four other different kinds of personas. Well, we let th I let them. I don't okay. just say they said of their course. name. You're out. <laughs> but I, but I have a, but I, I, I make a note. I go, oh, okay, that was good. That was good. And then I let them keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. But you can usually, or I can usually tell <laughs> if somebody is is going to be good or they're not going to be good. And and I'm not 100 yeah. percent right, but I'm pretty good and when I do castings I can pretty well know who the director and the producer will pick. I'm not the final say. Well, As a, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, yeah, I, I've seen you in I've seen you work and I've seen you you in, in you know in your your process and there is there's no one better. Oh, For the people you. watching who who don't know how it works, could you give a, a step by step? In other words, you get um, you get a, a role description and some sides what happens then? How does it work from, from um, putting the call out to the agencies to having the actors come in mm -hmm. and, and, and then sending whatever headshots? Well, and, she has and, the uh, submissions. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, so talk us through that. And okay. explain submissions. Okay. All right. So, so I'll start from, from the beginning. I get a script. The, um, I'm currently doing a television show. They send me a script. We read the script. We know who the series regulars are. Obviously, we're not going to look for those anymore. And uh, so we know, OK, we're looking for Mrs. Jones and Mr. Smith and the doctor and the lawyer and, and, and the desk clerk. OK, those are our five roles. So I type up a breakdown. And I say, this is what we're looking for. But we might narrow that down. So maybe I know that the desk clerk is a male. And maybe he's an Hispanic male. So that narrows it even more. And we know we want him to be in his 20s. So that takes it down. So then. We type this up and we send it out to the agents via email. Now we have email. Email is, is, is amazing. Like that. Years ago, I know Iris might remember, years ago I would pick up the phone. No, I, I know Iris for 30 
year we've more than that. Yes, <laughs> we, we go way back. Plus years, but years ago I would pick up the phone and I would call each agent and I would read them this. Mm -hmm. wow. And in between reading, I would hear, hold on a second, Lori. They go away. They come back. It would take 20, 30 minutes to read it to each agent. By five o'clock in the afternoon, the last agent was getting the breakdown. Wow. And you, there was no other way to do it. Then faxes came, and then I would type it up, and I would fax it, and then maybe in 30 minutes everybody would get it. Now you hit a button, everybody gets it at the same time. If you don't check your email, at the same time they check their email. Well, so anyway, so I type this up, I email it out. Then the agents send me name submissions. I'm at a point now where I know 90% of the actors down here. But if there's a name that I'm not familiar with, I'll say, could you send me their headshot and resume? Now, I'm going through this right now. I'm doing a, a series, and I got all these headshots and resumes the other day, and I said, I don't know who those people are because they're, they're younger. They're, they're, a new, they're younger, and I haven't worked with them yet. So when I said, send me their headshots and resumes, then I read the resume. When the resume says, you know, one modeling job and uh, their special skills are swimming and basketball, I said, no, they're not an actor, you know? So you want, I, I look for theater. Because to me, theater is the foundation. Sure. When you, if you're a theater actor, I can work with you. I can adjust you. Sometimes you're really, really big. Sometimes, and then I can She's bring. She's talking about I'm me. I'm talking about Karen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about, but, but, but we work so, yeah. together. Yes. And and we were able to to get it down where it's because it's two different types of acting. Theater acting is like we said over the mm -hmm. top, and TV and film is more. And then if sitcom acting, that's all. That's that's another direction altogether. So um, then once I review all the submissions, I say, okay, you know what? I think I want to see these 10 people for this role. They will come into my office. The agent will hopefully send them their sides. Sides are that portion of the script that has your particular character on it. I highly, highly, highly recommend. I really insist, but I can't legally, according to the union, but I say as your friend, I'm telling you, you should be memorized. You don't want to stand there holding your dialogue because it'll interfere with your performance. Plus, if you're just a little bit nervous, which happens, and you're holding your side, you can see. You can see the shaking. I've watched that. And then I have to cut the tape. I go, no, I, I can't tape that. You know? So it's too bad, but I watch that. I feel so badly. But so then I bring those people in, and I, I audition them. I, I audition. I read with them. We videotape them. Sometimes this one particular series we're doing now, oh, Karen booked it, uh, the, the Netflix series. Um, Congrats. We, she came into my office, if I'll use Karen, she came into my office, we videotaped her, and then we emailed that to the producer and director. And then it's out of our hands. And then they, they contact us a day or a week later and say, okay, we want to book Karen. There you go. Well, you, yeah. uh, 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 yes and no. I mean, uh, I like to always bring up when that happens, uh, it's a choice between two. Oh, it's a That's choice where between I think many. You come back in or and among say, many, I should say. And they say, you know, what do you think? Karen's not, Karen was one, for that particular role, she was one of the actresses we submitted. But there were many that we submitted. Uh -huh. And then they narrowed, we may have submitted 10 to start with. And we sent that to the Los Angeles casting director. She narrowed it to maybe five. And then we made a new link with just those five. And then we sent those five on to the producers and the director. Then they may have narrowed it to two. Mm -hmm. And then we send those to the studio. And the studio says, we'll take, we want that one. What if they can't decide? They will leave it up to you? No. It, it's really never up to me, which is, which a lot of actors think, oh, Lori Wyman, she's, she, she doesn't like me. That's why I never book. It's, it's not, if I bring you in to audition, yeah. then I think you're good. Then I like you. Now, if you don't book it, it's out of my hands now. So that's right. Right. kind of the process. To show my ignorance, do you, are you working mostly for clients filming locally? And are you mostly pulling from a local talent pool? Or are you regional? Or are you national? Yeah, why don't you talk about yeah, the, one, the Glades burn notice, okay. the ones that you've been uh, casting? Working on? All right, we're in Florida. Florida's a big state. We do a lot of production all throughout Florida. So for the last several years, I did TV shows, Burn Notice, The Glades, Magic City, Graceland, um, a Nickelodeon show that's the number one show on Nickelodeon called Every Which Way, 
Plus, I did Dolphin Tail mm -hmm. and Dolphin Tail 2, which are shot in Clearwater. Mm -hmm. All of the other shows I mentioned to you were shot in South Florida. However, I pull from all over Florida. There's a lot of really wonderful actors in the Orlando mm -hmm. and Tampa area because a lot of those actors came in when the parks <coughs> opened. Sure. And they had training. But this way, they could get a full-time job mm -hmm. performing, even though it's at a, at a Disney or, or a Universal Park. But those people are still maintaining their craft. They're, they're a little over the top for my sort of thing. However, it doesn't really matter because they're, they're honing their craft. They're working uh -huh. on it. They're performing. It, <clears throat> they're getting out there. They're in front of people. For the actor who never gets out in front of people, and they, they audition for me once every six or eight, ten weeks, the nerves set in. They're not used to it. It's like, you know, anything. Well, the more you practice. Is, is, there, is there a sufficient talent pool to f fill the need? Absolutely. In Florida, absolutely. Yeah. There's wonderful actors in Florida. We have a wonderful theater community in Florida, and I pull from that community often. Um, I, go to, I go to see theater, and I'm like, hmm, who's that? I never, I never met that person before. I've gone right after shows, often. Excuse me, um... Are you, are you an actor here in Florida? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Could you, would you be interested in auditioning for me? And you know, you, no, you see no, that. No, I would yeah, never. I no. <laughs> well, can I tell you, uh, we had met um, socially before, but you came to see me in a show called Stuff, and that night you came backstage and said, I'd like you to read for um, Glades. Right. It was, it was wonderful. I went, wow, who knew, who knew it works this way? Yeah. But, but, but that's, I was taught many years ago by, by one of the producers on Miami Vice when I did the Miami Vice show. He said to me, do you want to be a good casting director? I said, yes. He said, go to theater. Go see as much theater as you wow. can. He said, and I've always remembered that. So when I'm starting to, to, to wane and I need to find people, I, I'll call theater producers. Um, I know one, one agent in particular calls one theater producer in particular all the time and says, this is what Lori's looking for. And then he'll throw out names, and of course I'll know most of them, and I'll say, oh, but if he throws out a name, I will see that person, whether I know them or not. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because you know, you, you come to trust people in the business. You know that if uh, a particular theater hires actors, you know that they're good actors. So, yeah. Have you tried acting yourself? As an adult? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as an, as a, as a uh, yeah. No. Uh, you, d you didn't uh, make rounds, or you didn't do No, you know, um, I, I, <laughs> I have a great empathy for actors because I know the nerves that, that set in. I was, I was one of those neurotic, nervous wrecks that I, I could do theater. Wow. Theater's different. Theater, the lights are blinding you. You don't really know who's <coughs> out in the audience. There's, it's a, there's different, but when you're auditioning, for me, when you're auditioning for film and television, there's an intimacy. You're, you're right there in front of these people, and, and that, to me, was a lot more scary than being on a stage. Well, I know you've used what you've learned as a casting director to teach. Correct. And well, that was so my next question. Classes, I know you have a book. And uh, so talk, uh, tell us what you share with your... That's funny. When, when Michael asked me the question, he said, could you, could you take us through the process? The first thing that entered my head was, well, I, I kind of do that and it takes me two days in a workshop <laughs> to do that. I Karen, sure do. Karen <laughs> came and did that. <laughs> yes, I've taken, um, I think I've taken three of your uh, sure. seminars, sure. two in the big room right, and, and one, one more, more intimate. intimate yeah. right. And uh, very, um, very useful um, as an actor yeah. to me, you know, for for those who are interested in, in breaking into film and TV, it was, it's a very useful tool, I It is, I because, because there are nuances that, of course, I know because I'm in the room all the time. But you as an actor, you, and you say, well, I'm a good theater actress. I don't know why, I don't know what's going on. You don't know when you get in there what you do. I, I ask actors, and they say when they walked out of the room, they. They didn't know what, what just happened, you know? <laughs> because the audition is so quick. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, you drove 30 minutes, or actors who come from mm -hmm. Orlando and Tampa, they drove four or five mm -hmm. hours, and then, then it's over in a moment. How, how, how would you go about, how do I go about uh, taking the seminar? How do I find out about it? You can call my office, uh, Lori Wyman Casting, and, or online, Lori Wyman Casting. And um, I teach them periodically. I have one coming up. I know this. I'm not sure when, when this will air, it, but I... It will have been. I will have been, but I had one. But you do them <laughs> continually, though. I do them. I, yes. I don't 
do them as often as I would like because, thank goodness, I'm casting. And it's hard to cast Monday through Friday and then teach Saturday and Sunday and cast sure. Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. sure. But when I know that I've got time, I've got another show starting, another series starting up. So I'm going to take one weekend because all these people are, when is your next class? When's your next class? I'm like, uh, uh. I only put 20 people in there maximum. And everybody goes on camera because I think one of the best learning tools is to watch yourself back on camera. You never know what you do. I remember when I first met Iris, if I may use Iris, when I first met Iris, Iris was teaching. How to audition for commercials. How to audition for commercials. <laughs> and I was the new little girl at the front desk at the talent agency. That's right. And Iris called me and she said, I want to let you know that I teach and would you recommend my class? And I said, I, I don't feel comfortable recommending anything that I don't know. And so she invited me to take her class. And, <laughs> and I did. And one of the most useful pieces of information that I ever got in my whole adult career doing this was in Iris's class. In the taping, every time I would speak, I would jut forward. So I would say, hi, my name is Lori Wyman, <laughs> and I'm five foot seven. <laughs> and I, and, and, but when I watched it back, back, I was mortified and never did it again. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I remembered that. I, just, I, don't know if, so? I, I don't know if I ever told you that. And I remembered that. And I laugh when I think about it because when you watch yourself back, you only have to watch yourself back one time doing something and you go, oh, my exactly. God. I didn't know that I did this, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can verbally tell you till I'm blue in the face, Karen, you're rocking. And you're like, Lori, I'm not. Because you don't right. feel it's it. Or unconscious. You, but then you watch it back. And you say, oh my gosh, she's right. <laughs> so when I teach that, I, we videotape. I hand out sides. You go work on your sides. You come back in. I critique them. We play it back. Yeah. We watch it back. I critique it some more. And what's also very helpful is you watching the other actor. Mm -hmm. Because in your mind, you're thinking, uh-oh, I think he's too loud. And then Lori says, he's too loud. And you go, oh, hey. oh, good, I'm, I'm getting it. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so if nothing else, I validate what you're thinking, which really helps you in, in working with yourself when you're auditioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Can you tell us a little about your book? Oh, sure, thank you. Um, I wrote a book <laughs> called The Organic Actor, Insider's Secrets to Auditioning for Film and Television. And I wrote it after um, teaching for 20 years. People would say to me, this stuff is so valuable. You should write a book. And I would mm -hmm. laugh and I'd go, yeah, in my spare time. You should write a book. <laughs> oh, yeah, my spare time. So what I did was is I audio taped about 36 hours worth of me. Blah, 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 blah. Then I found somebody who did transcribing <laughs> and we bartered. And she said to me, she said, this is amazing. Because what it was, and this is going back a lot of years. This, this was a, a work in progress. She said it's, it was like listening to a book on tape. So she was listening to all these audio tapes. She goes, this is amazing. This is like a book on tape. And it took another like bunch of years before I finally put it together. I look at that and I go, that took 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, um, but it's, it's, it's a very, very, very useful tool to anybody who wants to get into auditioning for film and television. It's on auditioning. Because actors will say to me, I'm a great, see, once I get the part, I'm fine. I'm just not really good at auditioning. And I say, but if you can't audition, you can't get the part. <laughs> because I can't look at somebody who comes in and they're awful, and then they go, I'm sure once I hire them, they'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't risk that, you know? Right. Is there enough work coming through to keep South Florida actors busy? Something that we have now is tax incentives. And Finally. Well, yep. In general. Okay. So a few years ago, Florida had a, an amazing tax, <laughs> film tax incentive. And we had lots and lots and lots. Of, I was doing five television shows at the same time at one point. I look back now and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and and that, was, that was just <sighs> incredible. Now I do one television show at one time mm -hmm. because we don't have the film tax incentive at this time. Other states, Georgia, Louisiana, they are blowing up with work. Yeah. There's so much work. But the beauty of you as an actor and answering to is there enough work, you can be based <laughs> out of Florida. And now because you can do self-taping, you can get yourself taped or if you know how to do it yourself, and you can email a link with your audition 
to a casting director in Atlanta, to a casting director in New Orleans, and you can book a role there and be willing to work as a local hire, a modified local hire, which is all another, <laughs> a whole other lecture. But if you're willing to travel, you as an actor don't necessarily have to live in that place. Mm -hmm. As long as you're willing to travel, you can work the entire Southeast. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that Florida will get an, 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 a tax incentive in the next year. I, I really well, I do so. believe mm -hmm. that. I, I've, I'm putting a lot of intention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask you to show me how to do that because I, I, I'm really interested in, in, in doing that and then finding out how to, you know, audition for other Screen other, Actors uh, Guild, by the way, and, has uh, and, classes you could go and yeah. have yourself taped free. They have a tech, uh, yeah. uh, classes and yeah. actually they have classes on how to uh, how to self tape the technical part. Mm -hmm. I, I did yes. that. I, yes. I, I taught a class on that because did you? I received so many self tapes and many of them I, I can't use. Right. For various reasons, you know, they're standing in front of a, a wall filled with flowers. <laughs> <laughs> or, Can you find the actor? Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Or it's too dark, or we can't hear them because the sound is not good enough. Yeah. Or the person who's videotaping you, who's closer to the microphone, is really loud. Yes. And then the poor person who's, who's the actor is just talking. Yeah. Or the person who reads with you is awful. And that really ruins the, the audition for the actor. Yeah. So there's a lot of little nuances and a little like little things, but um, as an actor, you don't necessarily have to live in that particular locale in order to work mm -hmm. there. And there's so many opportunities now for actors that actors didn't have, um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. 20, 30 years ago. Yeah. Thank you, panel, for your input today. Thank you, Lori, for being here. I really Kim. appreciate it. You were wonderful, thank you. as <laughs> always. And thank you for joining us today on Spotlight on the Arts. If you'd like to know what's happening in the South Florida theater community or all around the community in South Florida, please go to floridatheateronstage.com. You can get all the information you need. Join us next week for Spotlight on the Arts. Thank you. I'm Karen Stevens. <laughs>